you know, what do you treat these guys with? I'm going to have the, what do you treat them with? What don't you treat them with? Fluids. Fluids, fluids, fluids. If you did nothing else, if you had someone, a, a client who had no money, didn't want to do blood work, fluids. Um, fluids both as subcutaneous. You can give intravenous. Some veterinarians don't think rabbits can maintain an IV catheter. The problem is, is that you need a 24-hour facility to be feeding. You need technicians who know how to handle rabbits. And a rabbit is so stressed by being hospitalized, it's really catch-22. So that's tricky. You're hoping that subcutaneous fluids and force feeding by an owner who knows what they're doing with critical care that's got plenty of water in it. And I'm sure everybody must have realized by now you have to add a lot more water to critical care than it says in the package. Okay? I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Um, but fluids, fluids, fluids. And the force feeding, again, really stressful. I know you've all owned rabbits that you just can't force feed. What do you do? And, and the answer is, I don't know. When I'm going to have the interactive part of this, I'm going to ask you questions. Um, and antibiotics, well, you know, we all reach for antibiotics. Is that really the right thing to do? I, I've got to ask myself that. It's in every reference I have. I've always reached for Batril. But the question is, is there really an infection going on? And if you add Batril in there, are you just screwing up the bacterial flora even worse than you started? So that's another question for you. I don't know if that's the right move. Um, there's something called Questran, which is used in humans. Has anyone ever heard of Clostridium difficile? Or is it? Anyway, if anybody's had a, a parent in a nursing home, Clostridium difficile is a, is a horrendous um, Clostridium that can cause horrible diarrhea in people, and, you, and it causes toxins, and you use something called Questran, which absorbs the toxins. Again, the rabbits who come in with that are going downhill so fast, although that's a product you could use, you're probably not going to have, um, have the time to use that product. Uh, pain meds, really, really important. What pain meds are safe? We didn't have much for rabbits when I first started doing rabbits. We didn't have that much pain meds for dogs or cats. That's really evolved over time. Um, Buprenex is an opioid. It's given as an injection. In cats, you can actually put it under a cat's tongue and it's absorbed. I don't know of anyone using it in rabbits. But again, the trouble is it's an injection. So you give one dose and then the rabbit goes home. The other commonly used pain medication is Medicam. Anybody use Medicam mm -hmm. in rabbits? Thing with Medicam, it's another one of these, damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's easy to give, it tastes good, seems to be well tolerated, but it's side effects if you have a rabbit whose kidneys aren't good. And if you did your lab work, did you do your lab work? If the rabbit's kidneys aren't good, and they're gonna be stressed because the rabbit's dehydrated, Medicam can cause kidney damage. So again, yeah. There's not necessarily the right step for anybody to take. Also, I have been having a hard time finding cimethicone. Anybody run into that? Use baby gas straps? Mm -hmm. I've sent a few people to the pharmacy lately and they've said they can't get them. So I don't know if I've just had clueless people, but uh, the baby gas straps, which I totally hang my hat on, they've had a difficult time getting them. So that's yeah, I've another. looked in the baby section and not find it. You have to yeah. go in the gas section. Okay, is that, yes. is that it? All right, that must, that's good because yeah. I thought, why would that go off the market? Right. It's so innocuous, but that's a huge thing that everybody should have at home because it's not going to cause a problem. Good tip. Right. I mean, I haven't been to look, but I've yeah. had the last two people, I say, well, it's a baby gastro. So. Yeah, so then you go for the baby section and then you don't find it. Well, so has anyone ever done the science experiment at home with semethicone drops? What you do is you take, this is really fun, um, you take a, you take a, put water in your sink, Take dishwashing um, soap and foam it all up until you get a bunch of bubbles. And you take a drop of cymethicone, and all the bubbles go away. Uh, they all fly, like flatten. And it's a good demonstration for how does it work because it breaks the surface tension on the bubble. And so the bubbles in your rabbit's intestines, instead of being a big, painful bubble, turn into a small, foamy collection of bubbles. That's how it works. Beautiful. I mean, wonderful, wonderful drug. Yeah, rabbit you think is a little off, throw some cymethicone drops into it. And, you know, what else do we use? We use cisapride. Has anyone ever used, heard your rep owner using cisapride? I mean, cisapride, again, it's supposed to change the motility. Does it really work in a rabbit? Because a rabbit's motility, you got this thing going two different ways. Mm -hmm. What does cisapride do to those rabbits? I don't know. I got a lot of questions in, in addition to answers because does it work on the motility of a rabbit's GI tract? Whenever you read the reference, they'll go, Cisapride, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, metoclopramide, another thing, I think people don't think that works anymore. Exercising a bunny, abdominal massages, um, giving them cecotropes from a healthy rabbit. Has anyone heard that? 
think I've actually done this with one. Crap frap. <laughs> That's what I've heard of. It, but, I mean, know, mixing it up <coughs> to get it out of a syringe from another bunny. But that shouldn't work because they eat all day. Produce. The problem is you want it to go in there with the mucus over it. Oh. So ideally, you want to introduce it into the rabbit intact. It probably wouldn't hurt to do it that way, but still, um, theoretically, I had to get a hold of it. Anyway, we have all these wonderful um, ideas, and each one has a little wrinkle in it that makes it maybe not work so well. Um, and stress, how good is a rabbit going to be in the hospital? Dogs barking, cat, I mean, really? So getting them home, obviously, is really important, but you need to really know what you're doing. Um, and here are things I want to talk about. Don't use these things. And you may have heard of some, but some are controversial. Uh, number one, laxitone. Laxitone? Everybody know what laxitone is, cat hairball medicine? Don't use that. All it does is put a layer of grease between the digestive cells. It, it's just glop. It is not going to move anything along. Again, it's meant for rabbits, I mean cats that get constipated. And I don't think it works in cats either. I don't use it in cats anymore. So anyway, laxitone, no. Pineapple juice, okay? Everybody know not to use pineapple juice anymore? Pineapple juice can cause esophageal ulceration. If you think pineapple <coughs> juice can break up hairballs, why don't you try using it to clean your drains? Because it's not going to work. So it can now, it, if it was benign, but now why is another reason pineapple juice is a bad thing in addition to causing ulceration? Because of the sugar. Oh, sugar. sugar. All righty. I knew you would be good. Um, psyllium, you know what psyllium is? It's what's in Metamucil. Mm -hmm. Don't use that either because even though it's fiber, it absorbs water and it gets stuck in the colon. So it doesn't work in a rabbit. Um, again, Medicam, I talked about that earlier. You gotta use them with caution. I think they really have a place if they're painful, but you do have an occasional rabbit that Medicam's gonna make them sicker. And the last thing I wanna talk about as far as therapy is steroids. Cortisone, okay? Some veterinarians still use steroids. Again, it's the, you, who are you gonna get on emergency? I don't use steroids that much in dogs and cats unless a dog has an allergy or asthma or real specific things. Steroids in anybody can cause side effects, but rabbits are way, way more sensitive to the side effects than dogs and cats and people. Um, we talked about bacteria being out of whack. They're just going to wipe out a rabbit's immune system and let the bacteria that shouldn't be there go to town. So steroids are a big no-no. Um, they can also cause gastrointestinal ulceration, you've already got an animal with gastrointestinal problems, so you don't want to aggravate that. Um, and they're just, let's see, GI ulceration, hemorrhage, delay wound healing, increased infection, and it just, they're very, very sensitive to the immunosuppressive effects of steroids in general. Okay, so if you go and, you know, you have no one to go to an emergency and you go to some emergency clinic and someone wants to reach for steroids, just say no, really, say no. Um, it's it's just, and that's not just oral or injectable. If you don't want them putting eye ointment on your rabbit that has steroids in it, you don't want them putting 1% cortisone, hydrocortisone cream on your rabbit because it can all get absorbed. So steroids, you should just not use at all. Even if your rabbit doesn't seem to have a bacterial infection, steroids can make a subclinical bacterial infection go hog wild. Um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about is restraint. I could not, did I see a stuffed buddy back there? I did. Um, oh, oh, good, that looks good. All right, you can see me get on the floor. I, w I forgot to bring a bath towel, but I don't know how your uh, veterinarians restrain rabbits, but I never put a rabbit on the table. I do all my rabbit exams sitting on the floor with the rabbit between my legs. They cannot jump. If they want to run away, I'm just going to let them go. So here is how I restrain a rabbit, which is an important part of therapy. Whether you can see, okay, I sit with my back against the wall. I put a bath towel right here in a trough, and I put the rabbit right like that. I barely touch the rabbit. I can do almost my whole exam, either facing this way, or facing this way, or even facing this way. And I can do sometimes I can, you know, um, hypnotize them. But if the rabbit starts to go, I can do this. I don't have to have another technician holding. It's just going to be the bath towel 
right here. If the rabbit wants to get away and fight, he's going to go. He's not going to hurt himself. He's not going to fall off the table. Mm -hmm. And most of them seem to like it. The biggest problem is sometimes I look down and they've eaten a hole in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, but I think that this is something that's really, really underused. It is a risk-free way to restrain a rabbit. And most of them, they seem to feel the warmth or something, and they just calm right down in this little area. And I can do nail trims and you name it. So that's my patented uh, <laughs> way of restraining rabbits. Could, could you show us what position you put the rabbit in for your trim? I just let them sit like that and pull their feet out. They're in between your legs. Yeah. And and that that you? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, it's the hind legs. I have the hardest thing. I just pull them out. Pull them out when he's facing you. Yeah. I mean, they can't really, you know, again, if they struggle, there are more than one part of my body holding the rabbit so I can feel it. And I don't fight them. I don't say no, you're, I'm, I don't fight them at all. And I can do almost all the nails without actually touching. I do this in dogs and cats. A dog who stands on the table, I don't pick their feet up. I go under the nail with the nail trimmer and just don't move them. So anyway, that's my And that's an important part of therapy. If you can't touch them, you can't treat them. So there. OK, now is the part where I'm going to ask you guys questions that I don't know the answers to. Okay. Um, number one, when I tell people to feed hay, you know, they come in, I go show them the pyramid with the hay. Is tell me about hay beyond Oxbow. Anything beyond Oxbow? I I have a place out in um, Bolton that okay. I know. Um, they have cut grass. They have first cut, second cut. We usually get second cut. Uh, we mine their cages with them. We, we, we've got these plastic double bubble containers mm -hmm. that the bubble gum comes in. We shove a bunch of hay in that on the floor. Uh, they knock them over, they stick their heads in, they eat stuff. And um, the greener stuff, I find, is better for them yeah. um, overall. But I, I get it fresh a couple times oh, a year. Oh, that's great. That's great. I mean, I just think, and do you have this all in what? Most of the people walk in the door, I have to say, okay, you're feeding KT. And I don't know if that's improved over time. KT has not improved. Good, thanks. Uh, uh, there is a impression. site um, out of Pennsylvania. It uh, goes by the name of, of the very rabbity name of Bingling Bunny Box. Okay. They grow hay specifically for rabbits. Oh, good. Well, I'm going to write like this down Easter, before. It's, I, I can go. dig up the website through my phone later, but um, they work with farmers in the area. In fact, you said they, they had a situation where it rained on their hay supply after they had, and they couldn't use any of it. Oh, so wow. she went out and found new sources, but they're very particular. It won't go out unless it's just right, and it's specially grown for rabbits to be very sweet smelling, very appealing to their taste. Now my rabbit has dental issues. His back molars grow at a slight angle, so he does not, even when I keep them, I mean, I'm in with the vet getting ground down every other month. He still does not necessarily eat as much hay as he should, but he's, and he's very picky, but he likes that hay. Right. right. And it's usually, it come, when you, most of the time when you think online supplies, you think dusty, old, this stuff is never dusty, and like I said, they, you know, make sure it's fresh going out and if it's not a hundred percent they don't ship it. Oh that's good. There's a couple of there's a couple of supplies, uh, suppliers that do the same thing. There's uh binkybunny.com whose uh, sales go to rabbit uh, was it rabbit rescues and they sell these little mini bales. Mm -hmm. And if the mini bales are not a hundred percent good quality they won't ship them out. Great. And they've literally shut down you know their hay section at times when they've had problems with hay suppliers. But it's all a matter of just finding the right ones. Well, that's just it, you know, the usual owners, what, where are we? 